Hello, this is Dr. Ozin. Um, today, first tutorial, we will investigate the settlement of vesicular footing on sand. Figure 1 shows uh, our model. Uh, our footing is 2 meter long. And we have a, the sand is 4 meter uh, depth. And we have some of the properties here. We have the Poisson's ratio to be 0 0.3. Our yours module to be 13,000. The bed hook at the bottom here will not be will not be modeled using plexus. Figure two shows our plexus model, uh, which has been simulated, and you can see this is symmetrical of this model. You can model the whole of this um, strip footing on sun, uh, but we are going to focus on doing a symmetry of this model. The symmetry is looking halfway of the model. And we are going to do our settlement halfway, which is going to be soft two is going to be one. So this is what this model represents. So this is what we are going to be modeling within plexus. Also to point out is you can also model the whole um footing, uh putting your uh, your settlement below, which is two meter, but we are going to focus on the symmetry since the model is symmetrical. The objective is to find the displacement and stresses in the soil caused by the load applied to the footing. The footing is to be modeled by means of a uniform indentation at the top of the sand layer instead of, instead of modeling the footing itself. Hence, the footing itself is not modeled in this exercise. So, hence, we are not modeling the footing itself. We are going to just look at the settlement. Hence, we are going to use an indentation using the prescribed displacement at the top of the soil to uh, model the displacement and stresses in the soil. The prescribed displacement uh, was explained in to our previous slide on the introduction to practice, which can refer back to. The, dis the disadvantage of this exercise is it will not give us any information about the structural forces in the footing, which is correct since we are not applying the load by instead we are using prescribed displacement. Hence, the exercise will only focus on finding the displacement set of setting of the footing but in the next exercise uh, we are going to use the same model same material but we are going to apply an external load to the footing table one shows us our material model we are using a move column model for this exercise uh, because move column is simply to use and it's a widely used model our material behavior is joint as explained in our previous slide in to introduction to plexus, a uh, train here will give us a long term behavior and it used to model dry soil. Uh, the reason why we are using this model as its representative of our model. We have our unit weight on such roof saturated and unsaturated, which can measure in the laboratory. The permeability is assumed to be one both in the x and y direction. Our Young's modulus is taken to be 13,000. This is an assumed for the type of material we are using. Friction angle to be 31. Again, this uh, value can be obtained in the laboratory. Before we start our model, uh, let's have a background info into shallow foundation. The design foundation is based on the concept of bearing capacity. What the bear capacity does it gives us understanding of the ability of the soil to support uh, or hold a foundational structure. The basic theory uh, of the bearing capacity is governed by Tezaki, which is shown in Figure 3. On Figure 3, as the load Q is applied to the footing, is applied the footing undergo a certain amount of settlement as it is pushed downward with the footing. The soil downward movement is resisted by the shear resistance of the foundation soil along the slip surface. The slip surface is shown, okay, so the slip surface is shown by this E, D, C, and C, F, G. The set of slip surface given the uh, give the least apply low Q. So this slip surface E, D, C, and CFG give us the least applied load, hence giving us, which is most critical, has given us an ultimate bearing capacity, which will be equal to the least applied load to the least load divided by the footing area. So this is kind of a small representation of how the bearing capacity works. 
figure four gives us the relationship between the load and the settlement uh, for different uh, soil material. For this, for then sun and hard clay, the curve here is called the general shear. So this is this will show how the soil will share. So for this particular type of material, for dense and hard clay, but for loose sand and soft clay, it will be a local shear. So basically, when we do our model, if you plot the relationship of settlement against load, and uh, we know that we are losing a yellow sand, and we get a curve for dense sand that we know possibly our part, uh, something we know that something went wrong somewhere. So this kind of gives us uh, an idea of of how the soil behave depending on the type of soil you are using. So this will give us an idea when we are plotting the graph. The pressure acting between the footing base uh, of the soil is shown in Figure Five. Figure Five gives us a different uh, distribution of the pressure of the rigid footing uh, for different soil. For the cohesive soil, it shows a concave upward movement for the pressure, while for the cohesive, cohesionless soil, it shows a concave downward movement. It is a common practice to use, to assume and use a uniform distribution as shown in Figure 5C. Foundation settlement can be divided into three basic types. Rigid block or uniform settlement as shown in figure 6a. Till or distortion shown in figure 6b. Non uniform settlement shown in figure 6c. Most damage to uniform settlement is limited to the surrounding drainage system, attached building or utility. The distortion and non uniform settlement are caused by differential movement. I may cause serious problems, especially in tall buildings. So these two types of settlement, uh, 6B and 6C, we call serious problems in tall buildings. Distortion produces bending, cause, which causes which the cause of most cracking in structure. It's impossible to prevent settlement of foundation, but as an engineer, you want to uh, prevent the foundation to reach its serviceability limit state, shown in Table 2. Table 2 shows different types of serviceability limit state and their examples. An, an architectural damage, damage to appearance, uh, you could see cracking walls, tilt of building, that's why you will uh, visit, uh, it's a damage to appearance. The loss of serviceability, you can see crack crack floor, dislocation of pipe joints, jump doors, windows, misalignments of machinery. Social damage or collapse, social collapse. You can see severe differential settlement of footing, causing bulking of column and overstressing beam. So these are type of self-service limit state that engineers want to prevent the foundation to reach. Now we have a basic background into shallow foundation. We know our model that we want to simulate into plexus. So um, now we are going to go into plexus, simulate our model, and uh, using uh, investigating the settlement of uh, investigating the settlement of the soil using our prescribed uh, displacement. Now we will go into plexus.